All right. So welcome to today's user group session, Return to Data Storytelling and Happily Ever After. This is an encore presentation from the Skills Exchange session this year's summit. Uh, if you were lucky enough to attend in person, there are a few surprises in store for you today. And if you happen to only catch the recording or this is your first time, you'll be able to experience this in its full glory, mostly. This session is presented by the Gnome East User Group, which if you have attended any of our sessions before, you should recognize us on the right. And today we have a very special guest joining us. Just a quick round of introductions, starting off with Andy Lunsford, who is currently off on his own personal quest with his adorable ogre twins. Andy is the Associate Director Data Instrumentation at Razorfish. Then there's myself, Jen Dungan. I am the Optimization Manager Analytics at Torstar. Now, since today's presentation will shine the spotlight on our own co-host, Jeff Bloomer, and our amazing guest, Sherry Deutsch, I will let them introduce themselves as the story unfolds. But before that can happen, we just need to do a little housekeeping about user groups. We are the North American Eastern Time Zone User Group, affectionately referred to as GNOME East, hence our little GNOME icon. So many of you, since you're here, are probably already members of our chapter. But if you aren't, feel free to sign up so you can hear about future sessions. And while you're there, I always recommend signing up for other chapters as well, even if they're in another time zone because all the user groups have great info to share and the sessions are generally recorded so that you can watch them at a more convenient time. Which of course brings us to the most asked question, will this session be recorded? Yes, absolutely. The audio and video portions of this session are being recorded and will be posted shortly afterwards to our YouTube channel. You can also watch our past recordings there along with recordings from other user groups. Feel free to ask questions during the session. We love having an engaged and interactive audience. So, without further ado, our story begins. Thank you again, my distinguished and honored guests for coming today. And so, yes, that is how they live happily ever after. I said that is how they lived happily ever after. I, I'm not, I, I just don't understand. They should be applauding and excited. Maybe, maybe I should try that again. I mean, come on, everybody. That is how they lived happily ever after. Um, Mr. Storyteller, wait. I have a feeling that has nothing to do with the passion for what you're saying. You haven't told us a story. Oh, well, then, okay. I guess we need to make sure that we start from the beginning. Um, how about we try that again? How about this? Once upon a time. How's that? Meh, it'll do. Tough crowd. Okay. So, now, you might be wondering, why did we do all that? Well, it's because of this very simple statement. People forget facts, but they remember stories. Now, how many people remember the last report that you really reviewed? Okay, so that's good. Now, how many out there, you know, how many out there really remember the last story that you read? Ah, okay. In fact, that's exactly what I, what I would expect. Now, that's why it's even more important that we even make sure to start at the beginning. If you think about it, so many of us as analysts often struggle with trying to communicate data. We are not ACE reporters, we're definitely not Tolkien. 
We typically choose numbers and run with them because we find that they're easier than words. Let's be honest, the reason it often feels hard is because we convince ourselves we're not very good at it. But here's the dirty little secret. We all can be if we just take a little bit of time to think about how we go about preparing our data in the first place. Basically, it's about building a simple story, no matter how small. Sometimes there's a hero and sometimes there's a villain. And perhaps there's even a plot twist. Now, what am I really talking about? Well, here's some real life coming right at you. And it's time that we introduce you to our main villain of our story today, known as Data Vomit. <laughs> yeah, he's ugly, all right. And if you think that Sparky is bad, just wait until you see what he looks like in real life. Now, I will warn you, though, those of you with weak stomachs, you may wish, you know, just to cover your eyes, right? <laughs> yeah, he's ugly, all right. Yep. Now, it's going to be just fine, folks. Please don't scream. I promise you, we can fix this. With any good story, though, we also have heroes. Now, please in allow me to introduce myself. Now, this should come as no surprise to you because I am known to many as a storyteller. But in everyday life, I am better known as Jeff Bloomer, Manager of Digital Analytics at Kroger Personal Finance. I've been a member of the Adobe Analytics Champion since 2021, as well as the North American East Adobe, uh, I'm sorry, Adobe, ah, North American East Adobe Analytics User Group, and a member of the Adobe Community, uh, Community Advisors. I have more than 25 ex uh, years of experience working with data and over 15 years of experience working in the digital industry, which includes Adobe Analytics. Of course, this story would not be complete without our amazing and magical co-host, Sherry Deutsch. Hi, I'm Sherry. I'm the Vice President of the Digital Experimentation Practice at US Bank. I'm an Adobe Bit Target Business Practitioner SME an Adobe Analytics champion since 2022, and a member of the Adobe Community Advisors. I have more than 10 years of experience in A-B testing and experimentation across industries, including fintech, telecom, and retail. So Jeff, what are we proposing today? Well, I I'm sure most everyone who registered for this session is wondering by now when we were getting around to that. So, I mean, who hasn't sat there and just wished all those numbers on the screen could just magically spin their own tail for them? And I'm sure there are plenty of us who feel that their hard-earned efforts are overlooked or underutilized. Even more importantly, we're often challenged to ensure our insights simply resonate with our intended audience. Well, I'm here to tell you that we are here to bring you just a teensy little bit of magic to your world today because... During this session, you'll learn the significance and value of building compelling narratives tailored to diverse audiences and communication methods. I will also briefly speak about the essential components of an engaging narrative, and then, finally, Sherry will follow, uh, follow by guiding you through some awesome strategies for devising and implementing an analytic style guide. Our goal is to find the happy ending in our story, and of course, that happy ending for you means elevating the quality and impact of your deliverables, leading to a greater sense of accomplishment, reduced stress, and happier, more informed stakeholders. Now, reaching that happy ending means being set upon the path to get there and understanding the value of a good data story is where we take that first step. First of all, a good data story provides your data consumers a better understanding of the situation. Stories allow your audience to become more engaged and reduce cognitive load, meaning they have a higher likelihood of paying attention and understanding the informative uh, information quickly. A good story also amplifies your efforts. Honestly, if you just send out a link with a quick note and then no one reads it, 
all you have done is succeed in contributing to what a former manager of mine lovingly referred to as file 13, or what we in the analytics world would call the digital black hole. Stories can help improve and or deal with poorly executed initiatives more efficiently and quickly. Developing these habits to build better stories will help you to foster increased credibility, which also means what? Job security. Of course, as much as we might wish for it, none of this happens overnight or with the wave of the magic wand. Now, just remember, even though you may not consider yourself an author, you are the architect of your data story. And what that means is you are ultimately accountable. That's right. When that email hits your data consumer's inbox, it's all on you. You are responsible for the data story when, uh, that they read when it arrives. Now, take just a minute to look these questions uh, over and marinate the, on them just a little bit because knowing the answers will help make your work more effective and waste less of your time. And understanding these questions is gonna help you go into this next slide. Because now we're going to introduce some bonus material here that we didn't cover at Adobe Summit. Some of this is borrowed from one of my favorite books that I've been reading recently entitled Effective Data Storytelling by Brent Dykes. The psychology around data storytelling is, pardon the pun, quite telling in and of itself, but it really helps to think through why and how it can be so effective. First, most of the decisions that we make are not based in logic. Next, our need for causation is hardwired into us. Think about it. If you give data consumers a perfectly good report, but then inform them shortly afterward that the data is faulty, the likelihood of them trusting the data afterward will be almost impossible, no matter how many retractions are made to that statement. Something powerful and extraordinary, extraordinary happens to us when we hear these simple words, once upon a time. In fact, our brains have completely different reactions to the to facts versus stories. So check this out. We mainly scrutinize facts that we don't like. Ever hear the phrase confirmation bias? That's what we're talking about here. We may even fight conflicting facts like a physical threat. Similarly, similarly our brains may bend or break facts to support our existing biases. Worst even, um, corrective facts can potentially strengthen our misinformed positions. When facts are visualized, it's harder for us to reject them. For example, people might first be told in the news that this person was robbing a bank. However, a news update later that evening revealed that this gentleman right here, he was simply visiting the bank to make a deposit. Mm -hmm. However, now there's a news report out there that the bank was held up by this poor gentleman and he was completely innocent. Stories engage more of our brain. Stories form a unique connection between the storyteller and listener. Stories increase our attention and empathy. Stories make us less skeptical and more open to change, and stories enhance our comprehension. So creating any effective story requires certain basic elements, as you can see in this plot diagram. You'll find, find it in novels, TV shows, and any of your favorite movies that you go see. Even a good newscaster knows how to string the facts together to bring you an effective broadcast. Regardless, I believe all of you will agree a good story requires a beginning, middle, and an end, and preferably they should also proceed in that order, at least for the most part. So when we work with our data and send out our reporting, many of us tend to do what I just did earlier, and, in, and you know the order gets all jumbled up. Typically, we jump right into delivering the ending of our data stories first, and now that we've lost everyone's interest, they've moved on to the next thing. 
So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it appears we only got a tenth of an inch of snow last night, but it's 10, you know, minus 10 degrees and it's freezing outside. But your audience is saying, yeah, big deal. It's been freezing outside. So, so what else is new? Now you've got to try and recapture their attention after you already gave them the ending and they have no clue, you know, what, you know, what, you know, how we even got there, right? Here's where you can begin to shake things up a bit. Your data consumers just asked you the most important question. So what? Well, that's where you can, where you should consider where you start building your story, not just addressing it on the back end. If you approach things from an alternative perspective, you will also realize that your reports uh, will have a completely new feel. This may result in some new and more interesting conversations. While you're at it, I recommend using some of these little tricks as well. Never hurts to pull in some illustrations to help our data consumers understand what we're trying to explain. Thank you to Jen Lasser. Remember, uh, so remember, you know, those picture books when we were kids? We all like to have some imagery along the way to help guide us along. Plus, I highly recommend you annotate your data when things happen, just like you're, you know, and just like you might be doing right now, take notes. Okay, remember, so many factors go into the story you're telling. You may have product managers, you may have marketers. You may have customer and customer care people. You may have any number of individuals or groups that you rely upon who can provide you input that may influence the data story that's reflected in your reporting. When you have questions about why a particular data point happened, who, what, when, where, how, everything that you should be asking, these things make up the different elements of your plot diagram, and it will be up to you to figure out where they fall into place. Is there a villain? Is there a hero? Is there a plot twist? Was there a reason for any drama at all, or was it all just a non-event? You decide. You get to be the director, and like I said, you're the architect. And to be a successful architect, you need a good set of plans. Let me introduce myself again. I'm Shari, and in addition to being the Vice President of the Digital Experimentation Practice at U.S. Bank, I am also the Fairy Guide for Data Storytelling. There, that's better. So There are fairy guides for almost everything. We cover more than fashion and turning produce into transportation. We are everywhere, doing our best to help you be at your best at all that you do. So Jeff has pointed out data storytelling is both art and science. We want to tell our story so that our audience quickly grasps the key points. To do that effectively, we need to ensure that their view of the story matches our own. But understanding is subjective, influenced by perception and not the storyteller's intention. So how can we make these two match? If we use a consistent, clear presentation of data, Every time, we can make our stories more accessible and easier to understand. If you want to get someone excited about something, use familiar language. Do you want a colloidal emulsion made of milk, cream, sugar, and air? Or do you want some ice cream? We couldn't send Cinderella to the ball without the perfect outfit, so we shouldn't send our data into the world unless it's ready to catch the attention of a handsome royal or your most important stakeholders. This is where appearance matters, so I said, Give your data some style. And if you can't make it happen with some fairy dust, the next best step is governance. Fighting the data vomit monster is not for the faint of heart. It's going to take courage from all of us to banish documents with disorganized information and help our data reach its destiny. Style guides facilitate deliberate and clear communication. For the analyst, it reduces the time and effort needed to create effective reports. For the reader, it reduces the cognitive load to understand the data. It'll add consistency and cohesiveness to reports authored at different times by different analysts or both. This becomes more critical 
as the size and influence of your team grows. And there are two main types of style guides, visual and editorial. A visual style guide outlines how contents and elements should appear. It directs the format and design of representations of information, including infographics and data visualizations, as well as workspaces, emails, and PowerPoints. An editorial style guide manages written content. It can include dashes, abbreviations, capitalizations, and most importantly, the Oxford comma. We've debated this one for years in the Enchanted Forest. Personally, I can't think of a more important piece of grammar as it helps us to celebrate each element in a series of three or more. It's essential. Of course, if you'd like to debate that further, I'm available after the session. U.S. Bank does not use the Oxford comma, and unfortunately, I'm not powerful enough to write that wrong. It's not hard to write your own magical rules to help combat Sparky. It's likely that your company already has some guidance on how they want the brand presented, buried somewhere on the internet. It'll usually offer rules for both editorial and visual elements, whether you agree with them or not. <laughs> Oxford comma. It may also include templates, especially for PowerPoint. Consider this as a style guide for your style guide and use it as a starting point. Next. Talk with those that consume your reports. This is part of what Jeff mentioned in knowing your audience. How much detail is valuable? How much is overwhelming? How, when, and where do they want to receive their information? We want to meet our stakeholders where they live. Talk to those that create the reports. You're asking them to change their way of working, so it's important that they're a part of the process. How much do they know about data storytelling? How much do they care? Do they have the time or energy to incorporate new guidelines? So consider your team, consider your audience, consider the level of effort to implement, and consider the value of each guideline. How will it specifically aid in understanding? I have some examples from the style guide that I created with my team. It is specific to experimentation. Yours may differ, depend on your team's requirements and goals. It may be too much detail to share the exact number of unique visitors in an experiment when the number is in the hundreds of thousands. So let's make it easier for them. That's much better. Shorter numbers are easier to digest and compare, but it's important to be consistent. Color draws the eye, but if we use too much, the reader won't know where to look. Less is more. This rule also applies to formatting. It should be used to direct the reader's most crucial eye to the most crucial information, because if everything is important, then nothing is. If we use too little character styling, it's not clear where to look. If we use too much, we have the exact same problem. As my neighbor Goldilocks would say, this is perfect. Starting, at the y, starting the y-axis at zero creates a meaningful and predictable baseline. An exception may be if you're trying to show more dramatic relationship with small changes, especially percent changes. Luckily, Adobe Analytics Workspace has an option to set this by default. And yes, as the data storytelling fairy guide, I get to take credit for this. I wanted it to be easy for you, so I whispered in the ear of the product managers at Adobe. Check your preferences and you'll find several options to customize based on your team's needs. Set it and forget it. You're welcome. Stakeholders will love when reports that they would love. Stakeholders will love when they know exactly where to look for the information they need, no matter who created the report. Analysts will love not having to start every report from scratch. In analysis workspace, templates are now called company reports. After you create a workspace, choose Save as a Company Report, and it'll be available for anyone to use. For an experiment, the hypothesis is easy to find and the results are clear. 
we added a day counter because it's usually the first question we're asked. How long has the test been live? Titles orient users quickly. They should be specific and detailed. That's much better. I think it's clearer. This applies to components as well. They should be concise and consistent. This is so much easier for our audience to understand. I created a first draft and had a working session with the digital experimentation team, but it was not as simple as I thought, which shouldn't have surprised me. I never said that fairy guides were perfect. We reviewed the content, had a few debates, and in the end, decided to add some elements as guidelines and some as requirements. In addition, we're working on automated reporting. Our data scientists will use our guide to program the software to add another layer of consistency. This is why it's so important to get that 360 view before making any final decisions. Our style guide will likely grow as we find more use cases. We also created a list of commonly used terms in case our readers are unfamiliar with the language of experimentation. So use your internet, distribute it via carrier pigeon, have the town crier make a royal decree. However you share your style guide, make sure that it's easy to find. I'm only going to touch on this lightly because Jeff and I are not experts. When we create reports, we need to consider how our readers are unique in ways that we can and cannot see. And here are some of our favorite resources. You'll never lose friends by including everyone. Now that we've had the opportunity to walk you through these different concepts of data storytelling, I want to remind you of our not so little friend. And I'll call him a friend because we can transform him with just a little patience, understanding, some fairy panache, and it never hurts to include some ice cream. <laughs> so everyone, I invite you to just take one last little look because I do really mean it this time. Welcome to your happily ever after. And that's right, folks. Now we can see neat and clean lines. Our highlights are easy to find. We can immediately see that we are in the second week of a record in native mobile sales. You will notice I am even accommodating for the PowerPoint display. <laughs> you know, not necessarily our favorite data output, but moving on. You will also notice that our product managers can very easily find their product highlights just as easily. And most of all, drum roll, please. Can't do a drum roll very well here. Here we go. <laughs> um, um, right again, folks, we kept the best for last. Instead of hitting you with the obvious top line metrics, just like you would always expect, this time we took you through the data story and got you to the end with the most important information when it means the most. And there you have it. Mr. Storyteller, haven't you learned by now? It's never that simple. Uh, Don't forget about that little plot twist you need to include here. Well, yeah, right. As you know, it just wouldn't be an action-packed story if we didn't, you know, save something like that for the very end. Remember when I mentioned showing the final output to you in PowerPoint with a minor bit of distaste in my mouth? Well, I'm sure you know, a lot of times this stuff tends to be delivered in email. Well, in doing our first reveal on a long format isn't necessarily as impressive when you're also straining to see everything crammed into a widescreen display. But I can assure you, the first time that this output arrives in your inbox, it would make a world of difference. Can you see what I mean? Great. And with that, folks, let's review a few takeaways. It's important to start at the beginning and tell a full story, no matter how brief. 
And as analysts, it's our responsibility to make sure that our stakeholders understand the story and facilitate the creation of consistent reportings by implementing a data style guide. So from this point, <laughs> That ends our official presentation that we did at Adobe Summit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to step into some additional resources and materials uh, that uh, we'd like to offer as bonus material. Um, and I'll show you some additional links and things like that that we'd like to provide to you. So putting together this group of additional resources, um, we thought that um, other places for more information, uh, Adobe has put together a wonderful data visualization playbook, which goes with the webinar, The Art and Science of Data Visualization. Again, we recommend looking at our company style guide, um, some more information about managing reports, and, and of course, um, effective data storytelling by Brent Dykes, which has yes. been an incredible help to both of us throughout our careers. Definitely so. So one of the bonus strategies I wanted to share is how we use design principles to enhance our data storytelling. It's um, sharing information without having to use any types, any words. So Gestalt is German for unified whole. The basis of the Gestalt principle is that the human mind wants to create order and disorder and wants to see patterns. It was created in the 1920s to show how humans might make sense of the confusing things that they see. Our brain fills in gaps and creates relationships to avoid uncertainty. And it's also about our tendency to perceive the whole as opposed to individual elements. So by putting space between elements, you can create the perception of groups, even when other characteristics are the same. When things appear similar to each other, we group them together. In this specific image, items that are the same color are more likely to be seen as related than those that are the same shape. This is one of my favorite, and I'm not sure that it applies in some of the work that we do, but I love that our eye prefers to see complete shapes. And if you're um, of a similar age to me, you also see four little Pac-Mans in the corner and wonder where the ghosts are. So, <laughs> That's exactly I, what I see too. <laughs> <laughs> Size is so important, but again, too much is not helpful. So try to use no more than three sizes when using scale. And of course, make the most important element the largest. By laying out elements logically and strategically, we can influ influence the reader's perception and guide them to determine which information is the most important and in what order it comes. We talked about font color, but contrast can include shape and layout. By using visually dissimilar elements, we can capture attention and show impact. A basic version of this is the bar chart. Using the juxtaposition of visually dissimilar elements, can convey the fact that these elements are indeed different. So, and we have some examples from the work that I did with my team, which is also available on um, Experience League. Follow our link. Um, the first is the Adobe Analytics Workspace report that you have seen. We use these for all of our reports, and it helps our users find, again, our hypothesis, the days live, and um, those primary KPIs. A, B, and the percent difference between them. My team also uses Confluence as our main record keeping. And originally, everyone on the team was making their own version of Confluence, and they all looked fabulous individually. But when you started to line them up together, it unfortunately it looked like it was created by kindergartners, only because we put emphasis on different things and different font sizes, and it had nothing to do with, again, the value of my team. So we came up with what we felt would be um, a unified executive summary. So this is what gets passed on to the executives and they can easily find what happened, what were the numbers and what else is worth mentioning. There's a section at the bottom as well for additional results and that's free form and each one of the analysts can put their information in there their own way. 
But if you needed a quick glance to find out what happened, you can go to this executive summary and see the results. And then last, but not unfortunately least, is PowerPoint. I know this isn't the most exciting slide, but it makes the comparison and the results clear at a glance. I have seen some arguments that say only put one number on a slide that say, um, you know, to show that percent change. But for our specific audiences, they want to see how many users it impacted and they want to see what the different conversion rates were. Part of that helps them to know that um, what happened was somewhat was it somewhat as expected. I can tell you that there was a 65% change between the two of them, but if you look at it and you see that the completion rate for one was 30% and the completion rate for one was 50% and your normal page completion rate is only 11%, you know that something is not right. So this helps our users validate um, what they're seeing. So I see the arguments for both sides, but this is this is what my team feels is the most useful. So thank you very much. I'm gonna turn it back to Jeff. Yes. So um, we wanted to then, um, we do have a, uh, we still do have a link here so that you have the ability to go out. Uh, we provided this as well at the end of our session uh, so that you do have the ability to go out and look at the material. So this, this link actually will take you out to the exp experience link to have uh, to look at the materials that we provided at the time. Um, also, uh, you can send us a uh, some additional questions, but we are going to take the time now uh, to open up for uh, questions as well as um, I, I wasn't sure if uh, Judo, if you still had some additional uh, mat additional material or anything that you wanted to provide at this time. Hi, can you guys hear me OK? We can. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much for an amazing session. As always, this was brilliant and it was really well presented and I love the whole storyline that you did through the story. So thank you very much. Um, from my perspective, I think maybe something I think would be helpful as well. And I know it's not something that you've mentioned already. It's just like there's a lot of other like kind of books out there that I also read like it's an area that I'm really passionate about. Um, so particularly like some of the books that I'm reading at the moment um, are ones that I could mention. I could put them in the chat as well, but I'll talk about them very briefly. So there's one that's called Storytelling with Data. It's by Cole um, Nafleg. It's a really, really good book also around data storytelling. Um, it covers some of the principles that you've already mentioned today, both of you, but I think it's a really easy to understand and easy to read book. And it's definitely something that I reach for quite regularly on my desk. Um, there's another one that I've just recently bought, actually, it's called Colorwise, and, and that's by Kate Strachany. I can't really pronounce the last name, so my apologies, but it's really interesting. It's a data storyteller's guide to intentional use of color. Um, and I think this is something that's really interesting to have a think about, you know, how to use color more effectively from an accessibility perspective. But also actually like how you can use certain colors and how it is perceived in different cultures and how certain colors would bring out different emotions with your data storytelling so again i will post this in the chat as well but it's a really really good book i think around thinking about the usage of color and a little bit more on the science around it as well um and then another one this is my last book that i'll mention is the one called data story by nancy duarte so this is definitely an amazing book and it's more around actually how you structure your data stories, um, the narrative that you use. Also really, really interesting um, things around how you could create a recommendation tree. Thank you so much for adding that, Shari. So yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite books as well. And I, I reach for it frequently. And also um, on her website, there's loads of resources that you can download as well. So free resources like some templates that you could use for your data stories and the recommendation tree. So do go and check that out. And then lastly, one of my final little bonus pieces that I would add is definitely um, to have a look at, there's a podcast from, by Leah Pika. Um, and it's a podcast that's Leah Pika, someone who used to work in the digital analytics industry for many, many years. So the podcast is really very focused around that topic as well, but it does speak massively around data visualization and data storytelling. So again, I will add a link to that as well in, in the chat. But these are definitely some resources that I would say, in addition to the amazing resources already shared, to check them out. 
And then do keep a lookout as well for any new resources that we're developing as well for Experience League that might be coming up soon. And also sign up for our future skills exchanges as well, because, you know, we will continue talking more around topics related to this as well. So definitely, I think, you know, keep on engaging in this and keep on telling amazing data stories because it's so powerful and it has such a great impact on actually unlocking the value of the data that you have. Um, thank you so much, Jeff, and thank you, Sherry, for everything you've done so far on this topic as well. I'll hand back over to you, Jeff. You bet. And again, this QR code will take you out. We, all the links that we provided in the presentation, you will have the ability to access out there on Experience League as well. So don't worry about not being able to access them in the presentation that we have. So we want to make sure that you have access to all of the assets that we have provided today. I think and this was why I was asked to. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and with that, we wanted to turn it over because um, we still have some time uh, to take any questions from the attendees. Yeah, well, you guys did such an amazing job. Testament to your storytelling. Everyone uh, was on the edge of their seat. No one was asking questions. <laughs> well, so that means we can take any questions that they might have now. Yes. And uh, so I don't know if we've had time yet. We do need we do need to try and uh, we do have, as you can see right behind me, we, we are going to have to try and do a drawing of the uh, of the uh, of the people that are attending. So um, we're, we're going to have to have to do that because I want to see if we can't try and do that live as, as well as as much as we can. So um, even while we, so we can vamp a little bit, if anything. <laughs> so if we can try and get some questions, that would be great. So if anyone wants to talk about what their favorite resources are or yes. an example where they've used data storytelling um, to to make a difference, I definitely want to talk about Leah Pico just for a minute because um, I spent the first 15 years of my career as a radio producer. So when I first started to get involved in data and data storytelling, um, I really read a lot of Leah Pico stuff and it helped me helped kill some of my imposter syndrome as I was standing around all these other people who've been working in data for years and able to hold my own. So especially, I think it's good for everyone, but especially for beginners because of the way she explains things. Yeah, does anybody have like a favorite uh, a favorite um, approach that they that they have for their data storytelling currently, or or has everybody joined to pick our brains? That's what I'm curious about. Mm. And now I've just spoken. Sorry, <laughs> I'll quickly mention something as well. I think it's a really great feature for data storytelling is the mobile app in Adobe Analytics mobile app that you have. Because yes. it's the ability within the app that you can actually create like multiple screens and you can step people through it, a very nice data story using that. I think there is actually a link as well. I don't know if you've already shared it, but I can add it as well on Experience League. That explains it actually really well. So that's one of my favorite tools to use as well. In addition to Analysis Workspace and PowerPoint, it's actually using the mobile app as a storytelling tool as well. So you actually did a really good job there of, um, be, of introducing something that, we actually did a, a different session. In fact, we did it twice, I believe. Um, I actually this the session that I did at Summit last year was with Jennifer Workmeister about the mobile app. Uh, so if um, if you have the opportunity to go out and take a look at sessions, in fact, we can probably even link that to this because the mobile app definitely gives you an opportunity to build stories around like you just said around yeah. around the experience and i believe in some cases in some cases you can actually build a better reporting experience because of that 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 layered ability to report you don't have the ability to do that within workspace right now so being able to layer how you build your report within the mobile app is definitely a way to reveal uh, to reveal things. So I think it's superior in certain ways. It's you can't do quite as much, but still it's not as complex, but it is really cool the way that you can build a story that way.
Shari, do you have all of these bookmarked? Like, seriously, you're like on top of this. <laughs> no, I took typing Shari? class in high school. I can just type really fast. Ah. That's pretty much all <laughs> it good. was. But before I, I, I think I just aged myself by calling it typing and not keyboarding. So we'll just gloss over that and pretend no one noticed that. After all, fairies are ageless. Ageless. We have been here forever and we will continue today. <laughs> Some of us took typing when we were in grade school. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and when I was done with my typing work, we basically played Miss Pac-Man, which brings us back to um, on the Apple, whatever they were, which brings me back to my uh, Gestalt principle. So I've seen Pac-Mans everywhere. Waka, 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 waka. Um, yeah. Sherry, <laughs> if you have a question or a comment, go ahead. Uh, yes, this might be a bit of a basic question, but um, I wanted to know within workspace, when you're looking to tell that data story and you wanted to um, include an image, I couldn't figure out how to upload an image. Like I can see that I can link to an image, but I actually don't know how to you can't you can't upload okay one. the only okay. way that you can do images and this is one of my pet peeves is that the only way that you can do it is you have to link out to an image with with a full url uh so what i have to do is i use a service called imgur so that i can link out to it so you are correct you can't upload an image um okay. but even with, so Im, Imgur is probably the best, what you do like on Imgur, you can actually do what's called a private post so that people can't do that. But I would still recommend when you're doing that, don't do anything that you would consider, um, you know, cor sensitive, corporate. Sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sensitive or anything like that. Okay. Um, if you're going to do corporate sensitive stuff, I'll, I'll use like, like what Sherry was saying, like Confluence or anything along along those lines where it'll still be, you know, it, it, it can be linked that way and you can see things because I've linked stuff from Confluence where I have images hosted in Confluence and things like that. And then that way it'll still show that way. But I've been very, I've been very careful with images, but you can use Imgur for instance, for, for images, because I've done stuff like from, from, from Kroger's, yeah, uh, yeah, from from Kroger's website and things like that. If I want to be able to pull stuff in, just for illustration wise, because you're, I mean, it's so powerful just to be able to use simple things to demonstrate, like marketing channels and and stuff like that, because people just want to understand what you're talking about, and that kind of data story uh, storytelling, like I like I said, is very powerful when you're just trying to demonstrate a, a simple flow or you know anything like that um you're going to get me on my soapbox here very quickly <laughs> um, i just want to state confluence does not always work because no, it, it does not work it for us always. in the bank right um, i tried with the images and not being it, able it to put up a versus b on a workspace the images is a is definitely a sore point for me too and once we've mentioned to adobe i will get to work on that <laughs> okay, thank you. I just, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. No. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. I will I will apologize right now that I'm that I'm dual tasking, but <laughs> we're getting our drawing done. That's what I'm trying to do, yes. Oh when. Oh, wait, that would be unfair for me to win. I feel like I can do that myself. So. Yeah, you're not allowed to win. Okay, I will. Ah. <laughs> but just more on a little bit more on the subject of storytelling while Jeff's working through that. I, I don't know how many of you out there actually work in experimentation, but um, I'm working on a, on a different presentation, but realizing that everything that an experimentation strategist does, and most likely most things that an analyst does, is all about how you present your story um, and how, you, um, how you're able to put your facts in a clear and concise way to help get the reader or the user, your person to decide that experimentation is worth their time or that the result of the experiment is something that they can believe in. So investing in storytelling in any way 
is is really going to help your career, be it a, a creative writing class, um, an improv class, anything that helps you tell stories more clearly, I think will be a great asset. It has been for me. Thank you for those that are posting links in the chat. I'm looking forward to following up on them and adding to my reading list. All right, do we have our winner? Apparently not yet. Oh, we can't hear you, Jeff. Are you muted? You are muted. Yes, he yep, is. He is. Almost, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there. I'm just double checking something. I just sent, sent Chase a question, so I'm just verifying with him. Nah, Chase will do what we tell him to do. I mean, <laughs> Chase is the best. <laughs> oh, also, um, look, tomorrow is the Adobe Analytics um, Adobe Champion. Uh, losing my train of thought here. Is it the Adobe Analytics Champion uh, office hours at 4 p.m. Eastern? If you'd like to sign up for that, if you have any questions about Adobe Analytics, um, you're welcome to come and join us. You can, there are places to post questions first. I don't have the link to that. And then on the 25th of June, we're doing our first ever office hours in French. So for you, if you have any French speaking colleagues who have Adobe Analytics questions, most everything we do is in English. And so we wanted to try and gear some um, some content towards other languages. And French was the first one we chose because we have the most champions that speak that language or attempt or, to anyway. So yeah, we'll attempt to anyway. I, I'm I'm in that one. So I, I'm going to prepare a pre-apology for my bad French. <laughs> so we definitely look forward to seeing you all there. I said we have some questions already that are really interesting um, about migrating sites about um, some interactions with Adobe Target. And um, so and we do these, we do the North America ones monthly. So they happen usually on either, either Tuesdays or Thursdays. If you sign up to for part of our to be part of the group, you'll get emails about it. And thank you, Ying, for posting that. We also have the skill builders coming up in August, which I believe there are many people here who are presenting in that as well. It's going to be featuring several Adobe Analytics champions. And it's also not too late to get in your Adobe Analytics champion um, application if yep. you're interested. Extend in, to July 17th. Um, or, yeah, sorry, June, June 17th. Sorry, June 17th. Oh, yes, I misspoke. Um, yes, June 17th. Yes. Uh, so we we said that today's uh, today's prize was uh, was the comic book, and then um, after that there are going to be um, two others, uh, two more prizes after that. So in order to win, you have to be attending. So the number one grand prize. Goes to dun 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 Stephen Biggs. Congratulations, Stephen Biggs! You are you are the winner of the comic book. So there we go. You get the uh, the the comic book Spawn number one. That is a fantastic. That is a fantastic comic book, by the way. So I actually bought this the day it came out right off the newsstand. I actually have three copies of it. So the other two are in my box. So that's why this is a this is a, this is one of the prizes. So I used to be a big comic book collector until I got married and then I couldn't collect comic books anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so but yes, I have a I have a huge comic collection. But I thought that this would be a fun, fun comic to go ahead and put up. It was actually inspired data data storytelling um brent dykes made a wonderful post one day um talking about how data storytelling um storytelling in and of itself comic books are a great way to identify with storytelling and so i thought wow what a great way to 
what 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 a great way to uh, to have uh, a prize for the next time that we do this. So and how to tie in with data storytelling as well. So that is the first prize, and then um, I will be following up with the uh, with the next two um, here. So let's see here. Uh, the next one is um, please. Uh, Please bear with me. So Jasmine Taniana Gutierrez is the next one. And oh, then, then, it's, it's Steve Biggs here. Thank you very much. I was just scrabbling for my power charger. Just to <laughs> announce my name. I <laughs> well, got that good. Dread, dreaded red X at the bottom of my laptop. And I had Don't to hate that? find the charger. And then it wouldn't charge, but it's charging <laughs> now. So thank you very much for the prize. All right. And thank you for well, sharing the story. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, with, with with tension and all. Oh my God, I have yes, one there you go. See? left. Exactly. Yeah, Drama went, and everything. It, there you go. Yeah, it went straight from beginning to end very quickly. But yeah, the yes, end was yes. a happy ending. So thank you. You bet. You bet. So um, so that uh, and so we have our next. Uh, so that that's prize number two, and then um, I, I believe our third prize uh, is. I thought I saw her. Is Joanna Moftai still on, or did I lose her? Was here. Mm, looks like she had to. I did see her earlier. Yeah, I because I thought I saw her on, and then did we count it? Third did we person go back to the drawing board. Uh... May have to. Take a pick. For about okay, one minute. Okay, so I got to go next down the list. Next down the list. Okay, then Christina DeWald. There, Christina's here. Hey, hey. congratulations! And there's our and there's our third prize winner. So, we thank you all for coming. <laughs> Um, so uh, we will uh, make sure to get your contact information from uh, from all three of you. So yeah, yes. So uh, very good. So we uh, we will get all of your information, and we'll go, and then that way we can go ahead and get things, and then, uh, uh, actually Chase will get everything handled for you, and. Other than that, I think this is a wrap, everybody. I still have the slide up with the uh, with the QR codes that you can go out and get the bonus stuff. And we are actually going to post a new version of this presentation so that you will also be able to access that as well. And we should add some of these book recommendations in there as well. I'll copy Agreed. that too. Agreed. So we'll get the book recommendations that we had posted in the chat because the chat doesn't make it out of the presentation from today. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Yes, we all love it when we get to do these. They're a little bit different than Adobe Summit. So we thank you very much for your time, everybody. Yes. Thank you for coming. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right. So we can go ahead and stop the recording, Chase.